A common theme of today's speeches was criticism of the Nixon administration. Time and again, it was charged that White House programs were lagging far behind White House rhetoric. It was apparent that many, especially young people, were suspicious of administration's sincerity about a better environment. Earlier this week, Russell Train, the president's top environmental advisor, explained the administration's attitude toward Earth Day to CBS News correspondent David Schumacher. I think uh, the young people, the people who have planned this Earth Day, have been anxious to make it their own thing and not have uh, the administration or any government group or industry or anybody else or the universities themselves take it away from them. And uh, we've been anxious to not give the impression that we're trying to take anything away from them either. It is their thing, and, and uh, that's all to the good. A good many of those outside the administration, though, seem to have a greater sense of urgency. Uh, the young people, Congress multiplies administration requests for funds. Are you dragging your feet? No, I think very definitely we're not dragging our feet. Uh, of course, the administration and the president has to speak for more than one interest. And if you're on the outside, you can speak for the environment or any other particular interest and insist that uh, this be given the highest priority and receive the entire budget allocation of the federal government, if you wish. Uh, the president, of course, isn't in the position to do that. He has to represent all the interests of the American people here and abroad. And there are a vast number of competing claims upon federal programs. At the same time, the president has said publicly that the environment is our first priority, and I believe he means that. I don't think this is a question here where uh, the administration is at odds with the public on this issue. Uh, the administration has made a full commitment to environment, and uh, here again, I would, uh, I would say that perhaps Maybe we won't move as fast as everyone would like us to move. Uh, but in the overall, I don't see that kind of a confrontation between the administration and the public at all. This is Dan Rather, CBS News at the White House. The president, as Russell Train says, seeks to avoid any confrontation in the arena of ecological politics. Mr. Nixon this day also avoided any participation. The White House attitude toward Earth Day was one of benign neglect. The president's personal posture was one of detachment. But it is unclear how much of that detachment was calculated and how much of it was forced. Several weeks ago, the White House invited the national organizers of Earth Day to drop by for a chat. They refused. Christopher DeMuth, the president's 23-year-old assistant for environmental affairs, blames Dennis Hayes, the national coordinator of Earth Day, saying that Hayes was more interested in an anti-Nixon publicity stance than in ensuring that the observance was truly nonpartisan. But many of the president's advisors were arguing all along that Mr. Nixon should avoid Earth Day like poison ivy. They pointed out, for example, that the idea of a national teach-in on environmental affairs belonged to a Democrat, Wisconsin Senator Gaylord Nelson, and, perhaps more importantly, that there is limited amount of money in the federal budget currently for any action on environmental problems. So the president, vice president, and most members of the cabinet stood aside today. Interior Secretary Hickel in Alaska and Transportation Secretary Volpe in Maryland did make Earth Day speeches, and the State Department, at its own initiative, set up an environmental seminar led by the president's science advisor, Dr. Lee DeBridge. And I don't think we should hand out money to industry to make better cars, uh, which are not polluting, or hand out money to industry uh, to install pollution equipment to um, reduce the pollution of the streams. We must insist that the automobile makers and the industrial managers do these things at their own cost, which they recover through the normal channels of the competitive market. But there are certain public uh, costs. Uh, it is clear that public sewage systems are taxpayers' uh, responsibilities, and it is proper that taxpayers pay the cost of those through the, tax, uh, through the tax mechanism. While allowing Dr. DeBridge and some others in the administration to make Earth Day speeches, the president would not allow the issuance of any official White House proclamation making this Save the Environment Week or anything of that sort, which struck many supporters of Earth Day as unfair since the president, in the recent past, has officially proclaimed National Boating Week, Small Business Week, and even National Archery Week. Dan Rather, CBS News, the White House.
The White House did issue a statement that today's events, quote, should be a beginning of a new and sustained public commitment to the environment, unquote. Some quarters saw more than coincidence in the fact that Earth Day occurred on the 100th anniversary of the birth of Lenin, the father of Soviet communism. A high school in Boca Raton, Florida, postponed its activities until tomorrow. And the Comptroller General of Georgia, James Bentley, sent out $1,600 worth of telegrams warning that Earth Day might be a communist plot.